Hello class, welcome to lecture five. Today we're going to continue talking about 1D steady state conduction with no generation. We're going to start off by going over an example, uh, another treatment of thermal interface resistance, if you will. So we kind of rushed through this during the last lecture, so I wanted to revisit it here at the beginning of this lecture. So again, thermal interface resistance is not a material property, it's a property or characteristic of the contact between two materials. Basically, materials have real, have roughness on, surface, on their surfaces. Real surfaces have roughness, and when you bring them together, these roughnesses create imperfect contact at the interface of the two materials. And because of that, we end up having thermal interface resistance, which results in a temperature drop across the interface. So here we have material A and material B, and we have uh, a temperature to the left, on the left side of material A, we have a temperature at the interface on the material A side of the interface, and we have a temperature TB at the interface on the material B side of the interface, and then we have a temperature 2 on the right side of material B. So we have four temperatures here. And as you notice and might expect, the temperature, this red line represents the temperature distribution, which is linear in this material. As we learned last lecture that for 1D steady state conduction with no generation, the temperature profile is linear. But then we have this discontinuity, this drop in temperature at the interface, and that's basically because of the thermal interface resistance. So let's, let's work through a problem with this. So we know the dimensions of this wall. Each of these blocks is thickness L, LA, LB. And we know the heat rate going through this wall. It's constant because this is one dimensional steady state conduction with no generation. So the heat rate and heat flux both are constant. And we know the thermal conductivity of both materials. So in a practical situation, what we might want to find is the temperature drop across the interface as well as the thermal contact resistance. Because a lot of times you don't know what the thermal contact resistance is and you have to measure it or infer it from other data. So here's a situation where we're able to measure two temperatures on the outside of this structure. We already know the thermal conductivity, the material properties of the structure, and we know the geometry. So we're going to look for what's this temperature drop across the interface and what's the contact resistance, the thermal contact resistance of that interface. So our assumptions, what are our assumptions for this problem? Well, they're in the title of the slide. 1D steady state conduction with no generation. So we know we're safe when we have those three things occurring to use a resistive network analogy in solving this problem. So our schematic, shown here, and let's move to the analysis. So the first thing we want to do is first appreciate the fact that the heat flux, as I just said before, is constant through this entire structure. So the heat flux going through both these materials equals the same heat flux that's flowing through the interface. Nothing's changing there. Heat flux is the same. So if we know that, then we can write this equality uh, of three equations, basically where the heat flux equals Fourier's law in material A, which is K minus delta, times delta T over L. And in material B, it's the same thing as Fourier's law, K times delta T over L. But at our interface, this heat flux equals delta T. That's T A, T B. The temperature is on both sides of the interface divided by our thermal contact resistance. So the units work out here, so you have to look closely at that, but this is the balance that we have that we can work with. These are our equations, our three equations that we can work with to determine these unknown values. Let me move to the slide. So the first thing we can do is we can use this first relation, the Q 
double prime x equals ka times t1 minus ta over la, and we can rearrange it to determine what ta is. So basically, now we've determined what the temperature is on the left-hand side of the interface. We do the same thing with the right-hand side of the interface, working the other way from T2, determining TB as being equal to T2 plus this quantity here. So now we've determined TA and TB, so now we know TA minus TB are delta T. Therefore, we, we have found it. And it's represented here on the board in your notes as well as such. So notice here that there's a familiar quantity, or it should be growing in familiar. Um, it should be, it should be growing in uh, as a familiar quantity to you. Um, this L over K. So these two L over Ks here are basically the conductive resistances of the two materials on both sides of the interface. So it's kind of neat that that shows up uh, after doing some manipulation, but it's expected. So using that, we now can determine what our thermal contact resistance is by using the equation the heat flux equals Ta minus Tb over the contact resistance. Um, and rearranging it, putting it together, uh, we get a form that looks like this. So once again, we see that the contact resistance um, equals basically the total resistance of the entire structure. That's T1 minus T2 over the heat flux. This is the total resistance of the entire structure minus the conductive resistances of the materials on both sides of the interface. You know, so it's basically um, an inverse problem or a, a, a subtraction game. We're able to use the temperatures on both sides of the material that we can measure easily. And if we know the heat flux going through it, and if we know the conductive resistances, meaning the components of that total resistance that come from the materials, then whatever's left over has to be the contact resistance. And that's really what this equation is saying. So these are the two important things that we found. We found the contact resistance, we found the delta T. And I want you to think about for a moment what the units are on the contact resistance here. We talked about in the last lecture, the contact resistance can have two different types of units. Uh, one type is Kelvin or temperature over watts or heat rate. And the other type is Kelvin times meter squared over watts, which is basically the area specific resistance. So in this case, what is it? So it's, if you look closely at it, you can tell that this is the specific resistance. So the units here are K meter squared over watts. So this is important. We talked about why it's important last time, but it's very important. Just a reminder, this is an Intel Core 2 quad processor, puts out a lot of heat, and one of the main problems that people or engineers encounter when they try to manage this chip or keep its temperature low is the interface, improving contact between this chip and the heat sink. Because if you don't have good contact, the chip overheats and it can delaminate from the from the PCB board, they call it, it can delaminate and then lead to catastrophic failure. So it's a very important problem.